Phil Ivey is not a guy you want to have a tough decision against because he's terrifying and he's really good. <laughs> That's right. This is the 2016 Aussie Millions 100K Super High Roller. It's day one of the tournament, and Dario San Martino has a tough, tough decision. Against Philip Ivey. Phil that guy is hard to play against. He is the best around. This hand was suggested to us on Twitter by all of these people, even though it's only like a week old. We love your suggestions. <laughs> yeah. If you have a suggestion for us at the breakdown, send it to us on Twitter and include the YouTube link. Looks like action has folded around to Phil Ivey. And he's gonna raise it up. Looks like he makes it 3,300. Van Dyke Brown, yep, okay, I love it. Midnight Black, Prussian Blue. Nice, <laughs> yeah, I love it guys, I love it. Which one is darker though? All you Kappa Ross fans in chat, which which is darker, Prussian or Thalo? These are the important questions we're tackling here in the 100K challenge event. Not a bad flop for Dario, though there are three hearts out there. He has defended against Phil Ivey's button raise. Phil is going to bet here. Now, with just an open and a straight draw and an overcard, I still think Dario is going to continue here. He is getting over 3-1 to one to try to make his hand. He might check raise as a bluff here as well. That wouldn't blow my mind either. And that looks like a raise to me. Maybe not. He does raise here. Nice. <laughs> 13,000 here from Dario. Now, if Phil has nothing, he's probably going to just fold. If Phil has a pair, pair of 10s, pair of 8s, any high heart, a pocket pair, obviously like jacks, queens, kings, races are not folding now. He himself might have a hand like queen jack or a hand like 7-9. Those hands also would not fold. And now, if you're Dario, you are not happy about this, right? Dario definitely hates it when Phil calls. For sure, Jason Somerville, you're right. And that's because this is designed just to fold out Phil's incredibly wide button raising range preflop, right? Right. I mean, Phil has a ton of hands here. He just so happens to have top set. Now, San Martino's yeah. raise is obviously not completely a bluff. He does have some equity against everything besides a flopped flush, which is great because sometimes he can actually get there and improve and win a big hand. That's not really his intention here. He just oh, wants no. Phil to fold and get the hell out of the way. Of course, that's not going to happen. The real decision on the flop is Phil Ivey. He's got a real decision. Yeah. Do you want to re-raise here or do you want to just call? Both have merits for short. And I think a lot of times people are going to re-raise with top set. Yeah. Your standard tournament player in this spot is going to re-raise because they're afraid of all of the hearts out there. They don't want another one to come. Yeah. And they want to make sure they get value from other hands, which although... Ivy has the board crushed. There are a couple other hands that you can get value from. It is hard to get, a, yeah, like a lot of value here from most hands, though. If you re-raise, you're often going to fold out a lot of things. You're not going to fold out middle, middle set or bottom set for sure. You're not going to fold out the nut flush draw, but the sides that you're going to fold out everything else, right? Yeah, pretty much. Essentially. I guess jack nine with the jack of hearts might call a re-raise. But a lot of the hands that we're going to get a lot of action from if we're Ivy and we 3-bet are flushes, and that's yeah. not great for us. Even no. though we can improve to beat those hands, we're still not winning enough of the time to make that good. I think another thing that factors into Phil deciding to call is that he's in position, so he can decide to put chips in later. You know, he never has to worry about it going check, check if he doesn't want it to because he's the guy on the button. Right. Um, also, this is not a flat just out of fear. It's because Phil oh, yeah. Ivy wants to stay balanced with his range here he wants to be able to call with a lot of hands yeah and he has to include top set in that range if he wants to be a profitable play over time right if he if san martino knows that phil when he calls here kind of only has let's say the nut flush that's the only strong hand in his range and everything else is like a pair of sevens a pair of eights you know ace ten things like that it's going to be too easy to blow him off that range because while the nut flush can call everything everything else is going to have to fold at some point down the line but top set doesn't right and we assume that ivy is balanced enough that he can sometimes even have a hand with almost no equity against pretty much everything with the plan to later blow San Martino off the hand. Yeah, the balance in this case really means that Phil is just going to be calling w with his strongest hands a, a, some chunk of the time, some reasonable chunk of the time. And in, that includes hands like top set, which is a vulnerable hand, admittedly, but yeah. in order to maintain balance, it is necessary to call sometimes here. Absolutely. Oh, uh, maybe Fantastic. you're getting a little happier here as the seven from heaven spikes on the turn. 
So now you made your hand, but you're never like thrilled in this situation, right? Now I think you have to continue with the bet, right? Phil has too many hands that are just like um, ace eight with the ace of hearts, or queen eight with the queen of hearts, jack ten with the jack of hearts, ten nine of any combination, which has a straight draw now. 18,000 from Dario, as he bets those Prussian blue chips. With his straight here. Both these players are still pretty deep stacked here. We don't know if Phil's cards this hand, at least not yet. Now, if, the, if Phil continues here, you got to be at least a little concerned. A little concerned, right? The only thing to lose to is a flush, and it's very hard to flop a flush, right? But if Phil, and if Phil calls again, his most likely hand is a pair and a flush draw, maybe a pair and a straight draw, which are drawing like dead against us or drawing to a chop. Phil does call here. Hmm, the board does pair on the end, but do we pump the brakes and drive slow, homie, or do we say, okay, let's bet and then fold to a raise? Remember, there's already 70,000 chips in the pot. Dario does check here. Now, if Phil has just a 10, he's going to just check, right? There's no merit in betting here at the 10. Are worse hands going to call you if you have jack 10? I don't think so. Are better hands going to fold? Not much better hands, right? So I think the only hands Phil bets with here are single hearts that missed, full houses. Wow, and Phil shoves here on the river for 135,000. And you can see Dario is sickened here. I mean, what do you do with jack 9 in this spot? This is an absolutely sick spot here. Phil bets two times the pot on the river. And remember, Dario has 60 seconds to act on his hand. Actually, I think maybe it's 30 seconds to act on his hand. i got to double check how much he has at default. He still has his time bank chips behind. Those are those blue coaster sort of things behind his stack. What a sick river shove here from Phil Ivey. And yeah, this is the time to use your time bank chip if there ever was one. What do you do with Jack-9 here? I mean, you have to think Phil either has stone nothing, but would he just bluff shove the river? I mean, it is Phil Ivy. If anybody is capable, it's going to be Phil. But he would definitely play a full house this way sometimes as well, right? He could definitely play a hand like 8-8, eight, 10-10, eight, ten, ten, maybe a hand like 8-7, 10-7, maybe plays this way. I mean, but could Phil play a flush in this spot? I don't think Phil should I don't think Phil would... Uh, we're going to see a call. We're going to see these hands. Is Dario correct? And Phil shows top set. Bet two times the pot on the river and got full value. Look at that 341k pot. Yeah, 341k. This is over 200 big blinds in the pot. Well Significantly over, over 200 big blinds two, in the two, pot. Almost 250. And it's because Phil Ivey decided to make it that way. Yeah, that's right. Dario really just wants to check call a reasonable bet of about 30 to 40K here on the river. And Phil Ivey just completely tosses that baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, Violence sure. against babies. That happened. Okay. Phil Ivey did it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Dario, when he's checking on the river, I think a lot of it is so that Phil will bluff. But he's yeah. hoping that Phil is going to bluff a much smaller amount. He yeah. wants to control the size of the pot because he starts with 100 blinds back when the river begins. He doesn't want to put all those in. And Dario doesn't want to bet like 40K and then fold to a shove. I mean, I'm sure he's hoping that Phil will bet. The max, if he's gonna, if Dario's gonna call and win the pot all the oh, time, of course. of course. But but he's hoping Phil's gonna bet, yeah, a normal amount, so he can call easily. That's the whole point of this. And Phil just does not let it happen. I think it's great, right? Because Phil's sitting there and he realizes that Dario is polarized. Dario check raised the flop, bet the turn is now checking this river. Dario either almost always will have missed hearts here or a pretty big hand like a small flush. Turns out he has a straight. It's hard to put it's him a, on it's that. It's a rare thing for, for him to have a straight here because check raising the flop was a bit of a yeah. non-standard play. But it's kind of in the same category as having a small flush. Agreed. This is the type of hand that Phil is hoping that Dario yeah. has. He could also have trip sevens, like a weird way. He could have backdoor trip seven by accident. Like Nine that. seven, yeah. ace seven with the ace of hearts. Something weird like that could have happened too. But all those are hands... Um, Phil Ivey feels like he can get complete value out of here and he goes for the max. Right, and this just sucks for Dario. So now we got to get into Dario's shoes here and try to figure out why Dario calls and yeah. what Phil Ivey's true range is here. And I think the linchpin of the hand, and you brought this up on the podcast, Jonathan, is that Phil just calls on the flop. It's yeah. that great balance that he employs there. Right. Dario, I think, has got to be sitting there thinking, I'm only losing to flushes and full houses. And almost all the full houses are off of sets, right? 
and like tens, eights, and threes. Like yes, there's a ten, seven, and eight, seven. We can't yeah. we can't worry about those so much. But wouldn't Phil just three bet those on the flop a big chunk of the time? The sets and the and the flushes. Right, that's so, huge. If, right, if Dario is assuming that Phil's going to three bet those hands on the flop a lot, that is a huge factor in his decision. That mean, means that the only full houses Phil would have are seven, eight, and ten, seven, which both would definitely play the hand almost exactly yes, this way. They would, but then you don't worry about it because that's certainly balanced by the amount of bluffs Phil would have, even when he two x's the pot here with his ace x of hearts and maybe king x of hearts, maybe even some other like All the right. queen x of hearts. So in Dario's mind, maybe we're thinking like okay, maybe 20 or 30% of the time, Phil's going to flat a set on the flop, and yeah. the rest of the time, he's going to three-bet a set. So I'm not going to think about sets. Well, so or, now we got to think about his bluffs, yeah. right? It's not that you have to not think about them at all, right? It just means that you can greatly discount the number of combinations that you would incorporate into your... What, Certainly. When we're calling that, what of we're course. calling value for Phil, right? Just to be clear. Right, okay. Fair enough. Um, so other value that Phil could have are hearts. He still could have hearts. Yes. And... To make this play on the river, and this is an assumption that we're subjectively making, we're not 100% sure on it, we're thinking Phil would probably have the queen high flush or better. Yeah, because Dario looks like, when Phil moves in here, I think Phil is specifically targeting medium and small flushes, right? That's why he's betting 2x the pot. He's mm -hmm. saying, all right, Dario, you're a little afraid, and you're trying to you know, cap capture a bluff if I've got a big ace here, and I'm just going to max the heck out of this by 2xing it. And if you have anything like this flush, you just have to call. You're just stuck in the pot. Right. So Phil would probably do this with the queen of hearts specifically or better because he assumes that Dario would be betting the king of hearts. Yeah. Like the the king of hearts, meaning the king high flush, yeah, or the ace high flush. We just gotta believe Dario's gonna bet that on the river, even though the board paired. He shouldn't be that afraid of a full house here, even though it turns out Phil has it. So yeah, and so we think yeah, Phil can move in here pretty comfortably with the queen high flush or better. Okay, so that informs some of the bluffs that Phil can have. In theory. Right. Because if Phil is bluffing here, it's usually going to be what is a classic nut blocker type bluff, yeah. which usually means he would have the ace of hearts. Mm -hmm. But based on what we just said, that if we're Phil, we're assuming Dario's betting king high flushes, Phil can do this as a bluff as if it's a nut blocker with the queen of hearts or better. So a, hand, so a hand that Phil might play this way would be like queen jack with the queen of hearts. Yeah. I mean, that's probably the only queen of hearts he's going to have in this particular Queen nine spot. with the queen of hearts. Okay. Yeah. That's the other one. Yeah. You're right. But there, there's probably only two two combos of that ultimately. Right. And any king two, of hearts, he might play this way. I guess eight combos King total. queen with the king of hearts or king jack with the king of hearts. Mm -hmm. Hands like that. And yeah. then, of course, all of his ace of hearts. All the ace of hearts ones, right? Right. So those are the bluffs we're really concerned about. I don't really think Phil's going to have a bluff that's not one of those types of hands. It seems very unlikely. What, what else could he show up here with? He called the turn. Is he just going to have complete air? Seems, I guess, Phil Ivy, anything's possible, but it seems very unlikely he's going to have, you know, four seven off with no hearts in his hand you know it well seems seven is not air five <laughs> not four seven four six off yeah. you know what i mean some I'd, some just weird air thing which sometimes he'll show up with in, in certain spots but two xing it on the river i just don't think he needs to do that if phil's gonna bluff the river he can often do it for much less because he, in theory is just trying to fold out dario's ace of hearts right That's right what, so then he could bet 40k on the river and dario's just gonna have to fold a lot when he has the ace x of hearts yeah you know? No, sorry, the X is not of hearts. The Ace X off, but yeah. the Ace of hearts, yeah. So, yeah, in the end, it's a really cool play by Phil, especially if he's balanced. We assume it's kind of impossible to be completely balanced in yeah. the way that he did this on the river. Most people are going to lean pretty heavily towards value here. Agreed. But Dario is a little bit underrepped from checking the river as well. He is. He's in a really tough spot. We personally would probably both fold here. Yeah, but just we're afraid. We're, it's a hundred thousand dollar buy-in, man. <laughs> I could still got a hundred blinds. Get me out of here. Yeah. That being said, the hundred thousand dollar buy-in, there is a potential outside factor here. This is still early in the tournament. If Dario has a backer who's willing to give him another bullet, it might be a good idea to call here just to have a massive stack. Some I mean, of the time. sure, sure. The other factor, of course, is this is an incredibly tough tournament. If you see Feder Holtz is the guy between these two, he's also one of the best no limit tournament players in the world. This is as tough a field as it's going to get. So, getting this huge pot right now, you may lean if you're Dario, lean towards calling because when you're right, even if it's only you know 40% of the time, which is about what you need anyway, but even if it's a little bit less than that, when you're right, you suddenly have this massive stack. Back, and it's much easier to go really deep in this tournament. Yep, it all kind of makes sense, although it sucks. Yep. Stick around because after this, we're going to look at comments from last week's video. If you guys want to see another really tough river decision for your tournament life, check out Everything Got There by clicking here. This was one of our most popular hands yeah. from the last year's World Series main event. It's a great hand. Also, uh, check out our podcast and make sure you subscribe.
Last week we had a really fun three-way pot deep in the 2016 PCA, which happened just about a month ago, in which one guy made a royal flush, another guy had flop top set, was already all in on the turn, and a third guy bet folded the river and we still don't know what he had. Yeah, it was crazy. There were 31 left. It was a huge pot, and McAllister, the guy with the royal flush, ended up riding that pot and a bunch of other good play, of course, to third place in the PCA. But let's hear what you guys had to say about this. On YouTube, Adam Stroud said, on top of the terrible speech, I think McAllister lost some value by moving in on the river instead of making it about 700k. Raba can call 400-ish more with a small flush, or maybe even a straight and escape with a playable stack. He can never really call an all-in first tournament life when the best he can possibly have is 8-9 of hearts. That's a decent point. I don't dislike the thought process here yeah. because, sure, if you make it 700k, Raba started the river with 1 million, I think. Yeah. So he would have been left with 300K had he called McAllister's raise to 700K. And that gives him almost 20 blinds late in the PCA, which is not a bad place to be. Obviously, it's not as good as he was when he started the hand with over 100 big blinds. Um, at the same time, moving in is usually going to get the same calls that 700K is going to get. Yeah. The real question is if there's really a big gap in the amount of times that Rob is going to call with a straight or a flush there. I would think there isn't a huge gap there between seven, 700K looks super strong too, to essentially click it back for almost all of your stack and almost all of his stack in a dry pot, in a huge pot with 31 left. I don't know that it really looks that much weaker and I don't know that it's gonna change Raba's behavior very often anyway. Maybe there's a few hands, maybe seven, eight, nine of hearts or something like that is a hand he might find a call with, but that may be the only one. And I assume he's gonna call with Anything he's going to call 700k with, he's almost always going to almost call. Almost always. Almost yeah. always. All right. Someone else. We have Very Alive, W-O-W. Again. Second week in a row. Yeah. Nice, nice job. <laughs> All right. He says, going by the assumption that Raba has 8-9 of hearts. We still don't know for sure what he had, by the way. Do you think he could have found a call if McAllister made a sick reverse tell, like calling the clock with a shaky voice way earlier than would be considered a fair amount of decision time? I would say almost anything McAllister did would have been better than what he did do. Yeah. So, yes, in a way. I mean, he could have turned over his hand. That would have yeah. been worse, right? That would have been worse, yeah. but McAllister really <laughs> messed up everything as far as his verbal stuff and physical stuff on the river. If you guys watch that video again, you'll see just how confident the things he says are and how he looks. It's just yeah. insane. He should have just kept his mouth shut, which I think would have been better than doing this suggestion, calling the clock. Yeah. Because often, at least in my experience playing live poker, when somebody calls the clock, it means strength. Yeah, usually it means strength, for sure. Um, the other thing is, I don't think there's anything McAllister could have really done to get a call here. I think when he moves in, that action is stronger right. than all the other stuff. But he didn't help himself either with the tells. Definitely. All right, finally, on Reddit, Show Me Your Bunny says... <laughs> what? Show Me Your Bunny. That's yeah. his name. Okay, I can't cool. help it. It's, I should have been Show Me The Bunny, right? Show Me The Bunny. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I like these guys, but man, they can be kind of dicks. He's talking about us, right? Yeah. Anyone else feel that way? <laughs> That's him asking, not yeah, me. Yeah, uh, we don't want to know if you feel that way. No, sure. Yeah, no, go ahead, actually. Tell us. You Tweet know what? At us. He kind of nailed our brand, I think. That's kind of what, it's true, you know? We kind of like you, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week. Later.